probably continue to play them the uh, antique video is three minutes. Audio is five minutes. So we're getting close. Photographing what's going on. Yeah, see, once we got Dan McCoy's clock, Eric's clock working on here, we don't have a countdown that ALS running right here. And, uh, I think we have to go back and see what we're doing. Yeah, we do. Qui. Thank you. 
gentlemen, when we look at the report and see the camera who tells me they're definitely looking at whatever they've been doing. I would love to uh, Waiting, it shows. Okay, 30 seconds. Okay, we have uh, acquisition of signal now, so I'm calling Oscar Romeo 4 India Sierra Sierra. This is India Kilo 1 Sierra Lima Delta calling for a scheduled Aris contact. Do you copy, Woody? Over. Oscar Romeo 4, India Sierra Sierra, this is India Kilo 1, Sierra Lima Delta, Telebridge Ground Station calling for a scheduled Aris contact. Do you copy, Woody? Over. India Kilo 1, Sierra Lima Delta, this is November Alpha 1, ISS. Hear you loud and clear, over. 
Ok, Oscar Romo 4, ISS, IK1, SLD. Good afternoon, Woody, and happy to meet you for the first time from Italy. Your signal is already loud and clear. If you are ready, I am going to pass the microphone to the first student. Over. I am ready and Web Middle School, I am very excited to speak with you. Okay, go ahead, uh, Estelle. Hi, this is Estelle. What was your first mission and how did it make you feel? Over. Hi, Estelle. This is actually my first mission. I've been in space for about 80 days so far, and it makes me feel incredibly uh, thankful for the opportunity. Hi, this is Phoebe. What was the hardest and easiest part and challenges of becoming an astronaut? Over. Hi, Phoebe. I think the hardest part so far has been being away from my family and friends back on Earth. And the easiest part is probably looking out the window. That never gets old. Over. Hi, this is Soria. What is the weirdest thing you have encountered in space? Over. One really interesting thing is how water behaves. Everything floats up here, and so the way water behaves is dominated by surface tension, and it sticks to everything. Over. Hi, this is Cartier. What is the most profound lesson you learned from your experience in space, and how has it changed your pers perspective on life? Over. That's a great question. One of the amazing things we see from up here is how beautiful Earth is and how thin the atmosphere is. It really makes us appreciate how precious and special our planet is, but also how fragile it is. So it's changed my perspective by making me really care about taking care of our home planet. Over. Hi, this is Rashio. How major is the difference between daily life in space and Earth? Would things in space like gravity change your daily routines? Over. Rashio, I think the uh, routines that I have in daily life are actually quite similar to our work day up here. We work uh, about 12 hours every day. But we stay on a schedule just like life on Earth. I go to sleep at the same time, wake up at the same time every day. I brush my teeth in the morning and in the evening. I take showers. And so it's quite similar to my routine on Earth. Over. Hello, this is Kate. If space does not have the same gravitational pull as Earth, then how does your body stay healthy and stable? Over. Well, we are floating up here all the time. We're in a constant state of free fall, and it is really, really important for our health that we exercise a lot. So we do about two hours of exercise every day. About half of that is what we call resistance exercise, where we are lifting, um, we have essentially a weight machine and we lift, uh, do heavy lifts. And then the other half is cardio. So we have a bike and a treadmill up here, over. Hi, this is Anna. If I were to become an astronaut, what would you tell me you wish that you could have known when you started your career? Over. Anna, that's a great question. I would encourage you to not be afraid to pursue your dreams. Find something that you're really, really passionate about and then spend time on that. When you're working on something you absolutely love, you'll be better at it and you'll just ultimately uh, have a lot more fun. Over. This is, hi, this is Emmy. What is training like? And do a lot of people quit? Over. Emmy, training is so fun. We work on so many different things. We get to practice spacewalks in our neutral buoyancy lab. We get to fly our T-38 jet trainer. We get to uh, learn the International Space Station systems. We do robotics training. So every day is different, and it's just a, a lot of fun learning so much. And no, we, we haven't had many people quit. It's too much fun. Over. Hello, this is Rafaela. When you've just left the atmosphere and you can see Earth and all the other planets from afar, what do you feel? Do you have a sense of love for the universe and how amazing it is? Over. 
I definitely remember that first view after we were inserted into low Earth orbit, looking down at our planet passing by from a completely new perspective, and the sense of speed, uh, that is, it was an unforgettable feeling. And I absolutely, what I really feel up here is just an incredible fondness for Earth. It's such an amazing place that we call home, and we really need to protect it. Over. Hi, this is Corbin. Does it hurt when you go back into the Earth's atmosphere after you've gotten used to little or no gravity? Over. Corbin, I haven't experienced that yet. I will experience that at the end of my mission. We will undergo about three and a half to four Gs of acceleration as we decelerate back into Earth's atmosphere. That's quite a bit of load after being weightless for six months. So um, it, it's definitely something we're going to feel, but we are well protected in our seats, in our vehicle, and uh, I, I hear it's, it's not too bad. Over. This is Estelle again. I have a friend that told me that astronauts faint a lot after they come back to Earth. Is that true? Over. It is absolutely true that the body undergoes amazing changes when we get back to Earth. There are a lot of fluid shifts because after six months up here, we're used to uh, the state of weightlessness. And when we get back to uh, Earth's gravity, we experience these fluid shifts. And those fluid shifts actually move blood away from the head. And so that is uh, what could cause that feeling of lightheadedness. Over. Hi, this is CB again. What do you do when you get bored on the spacecraft? Over. Well, my favorite thing, Phoebe, by far, is to look out the window. That is just one of the most amazing sights, and it never gets old. I love taking photos. And we've also been playing a game of chess with Mission Control. Over. This is Shori again. Has there ever been a moment where there was a challenging situation, and you and your other astronaut friends aboard the ISS and have to work together to solve the problem? Over. Yes, I'll tell you about one of those situations just last week. We actually had to open a hatch that had gotten stuck, and the handle of the hatch on the inside of the hatch was bumping up against stuff. And so we had to solve that problem. It was a lot like getting your keys out of your car if you lock them inside. Over. Over. This is part again. What would you do if your spaceship was suddenly going down and you weren't able to control it? Over. Well, we get a lot of training on possible contingency situations, and I can tell you for sure that uh, if we had a, a situation like that, we would be fighting all the way uh, as long as we could to regain control and get the situation back uh, under control. Over. This is Rashil again. What happens if someone drifts out into space? Are there emergency protocols or anything to do to save them? Over. That's actually a great question. When we do spacewalks, and we're on the outside of the space station in our spacesuits, we have safety tethers, and we use those to make sure that we stay connected to space station. But in the unlikely event that the safety tether became disconnected and we became detached from structure, we actually have a special little, essentially, jetpack uh, set of thrusters. It's called the SAFER. And we can actually fly ourselves back to the space station. So that's emergency only, but it is uh, a capability that we have. Over. This is Caden again. If your nose is itchy on a spacewalk, then what do you do? Over. <laughs> well, Caden, uh, that happens all the time, actually, in training. Uh, inside the spacesuit, we have something called a Valsalva device, and it's used for doing the Valsalva maneuver on your nose, but it's also really useful for scratching your nose. You can just rub, it, rub your nose up against that little pad. Over. We have uh, one minute to lost, so stop question and the greetings from, uh, from uh, the Hurt to Hoodie. This is Anna again. As you're blasting off, what does it feel like? Is it nerve-wracking? Over. Anna, I was really surprised. I expected to be really nervous 
sitting on top of that rocket, but actually I was very calm and just relied on all my training and everything went just like the training, so I was actually surprised just how calm I was. Over. This is Emmy again. Can you communicate with your family while you're, you're in space? If so, how? Over. Hey, Emmy. Yes, we actually have the ability to email people from up here, and we can sometimes do video calls. And those use something like the they use something called the TDRS network, the Tracking and Data Relay Satellite Network, uh, to allow us to have additional internet up here. Over. Hi, we are Siri and Shravika. On behalf of everyone at Weber's Middle School, we would like to thank you for speaking with us today. 73, over. Okay, we have lost uh, the signal from Italy now. Okay, Bob, uh, we had a very good signal today, no problem. <laughs> okay, now I should come up in my clothing case. Oh. You know, and I don't know whether he's playing the closing video or not. I can't. No, but I mean, it's what you hear it here. Way behind, way behind. Yeah. Yeah. All the team is way behind, too. But <laughs> Bob, I'll wait for your cue to end the recording. Right. Okay, Bob, audio, anything else? Uh, Daryl, run the uh, closing comment file. Or did you run it already? Yeah, we just ran it. Your okay. comments, yes. Uh, no, nothing else. Uh, uh, Cedric, okay to stop the Verizon recording. Okay. And Daryl, the live stream here was running three to four minutes behind.